Welcome back to the respiratory chain in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video and the other one we're going to do that are along the same lines, we're going to talk about one problem that we have, and it's with NADH. Now, we know that NADH is going to be used by the electron transport chain, specifically complex one, and complex one takes the electrons from NADH, and that's how you generate the power of proton pumping. The issue that we have is we have NADH that's made out in the cytosol. Okay, An example would be NADH made by glycolysis. That's a cytosolic pathway. Um, we don't have to worry about this if it's NADH made in, say, the Krebs cycle, um, because the Krebs cycle is already in the mitochondria. So we have a problem when we have NADH made out in the cytosol because it turns out there's actually no NAD or NADH transporters in the mitochondrial membrane. And that's a problem because how can you get NADH electrons from the cytosol into the electron transport chain, which is in the mitochondria? So we have kind of an ingenious way of doing it. Um, the way that I like to think about it is we're going to, instead of moving the whole nucleotide, NADH, into the mitochondria, we're actually only going to move a very small, very small piece of it. We're actually just going to move the electrons in. What we're going to do is what's called smuggling the electrons in. All right, so this is what I want to start out with. I want to start a discussion in the cytosol with this aspartate, this uh, amino acid right here, one of our 20 amino acids. Now, to orient you with this, out here on the top is the cytosol, and here's the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, obviously, all they have indicated here is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The reason that we don't consider the outer membrane is because aspartate and malate can flow freely across the uh, outer membrane through transporters. Um, the actual electrons are going to be siphoned off in the matrix. Okay, So we're neglecting the inner membrane space and outer membrane because that's not really interesting. Those molecules can just go right through it through a protein. Okay. Anyways, out in the cytosol we start with aspartate. Now there's an enzyme called a transaminase and it's not really important to know what it does. However, aspartate is transaminated to a molecule that we call oxaloacetate, which we normally think of as a Krebs cycle intermediate, but it turns out there's some in the cytosol also. Oxaloacetate is going to be converted in the cytosol to malate, another TCA cycle intermediate, or Krebs cycle intermediate, and it's done by cytosolic malate dehydrogenase. Again, normally an enzyme that we think of in the Krebs cycle in the matrix, but it's also in the cytosol. Now, we have NADH in the cytosol, right? And you might say, look at this reaction and say, why are we wasting that NADH converting it to NAD? We wanted, we wanted to get the NADH into the mitochondria. That seems kind of counterintuitive. Well, what we're actually doing, remember, if we have NADH and we convert it to NAD, what we did is we transferred the electrons away. And specifically, we transferred the electrons from NADH onto oxaloacetate, and that makes malate. In other words, malate is the reduced form of oxaloacetate. So in other words, what we're doing is when we, when we get rid of the electrons from NADH in the cytosol, the electrons are hidden in malate. And then malate, can, it turns out, can be transported through the outer membrane of the mitochondria and then also through the inner membrane into the matrix. So in other words, we're smuggling the electrons from NADH in the form of malate. The electrons have literally be are stored in malate. Now it turns out that in the matrix of the mitochondria, this process we just did in the cytosol, we're actually going to do the complete reverse of it. Okay? It turns out that malate is going to react with mitochondrial malate dehydrogenase. We're going to get back oxaloacetate, the reverse of what we saw in the cytosol. And seeing as it's the reverse, we should get back an NADH, which we do. So an already NAD that's in the matrix is going to take the electrons from malate, regenerating oxaloacetate, and we get back NADH. So the key point you should realize at this point is we're not actually moving the NADH nucleotide in. We're only moving the electrons. And so the NADH that's here, this nucleotide, is a completely different nucleotide than the NADH that's in here. The only thing we translocated were the electrons, and we hid them in malate. And now we have oxaloacetate back, which can be again transaminated back to aspartate. Then the aspartate can then move from the matrix across the inner membrane into the inner membrane space and through the outer membrane and then back out into the cytosol. 
okay? Now, we're not really so much concerned about the transaminase functions here. Um, transaminase is out here, interconvert alpha ketoglutarate and glutamate, and then back in here, they interconvert glutamate and alpha ketoglutarate. Um, that's not really so much important. The important thing is to know where the electrons are. And the electrons from NADH are stored in malate. The malate is transported into the matrix from the cytosol, and the electrons were smuggled in the form of malate. Then we release the electrons from malate with the reverse reaction and put them back on NADH. Okay, so that is one way that electrons in the form of NADH get from the cytosol into the mitochondrial matrix. And from here, the NADH can then react with complex one of the mitochondria, also referred to as NADH dehydrogenase, and that will initiate proton pumping by the respiratory chain. Okay, so hopefully the malate aspartate shuttle makes sense. In the next video, we're going to go over something referred to as the glycerol phosphate shuttle, which is an alternative way to do this uh, same concept. Join us in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.